Hey, you're watching Cad Roll Hunter, and it's been a little while since we've tackled a box of quarters, so why don't we get in here and show it who's boss? Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is James and you're watching my channel, Cat Roll Hunter, and we've got a box of quarters to hunt. We're hoping to find silver, which would be awesome. We want commemoratives, we want colorized quarters, which we have here in Canada. Anything that might be a key date or low mintage. We're looking for anything that might fill a spot in our Lighthouse Vista album. This album is only missing 23 spots, so we've got lots of stuff in here. Particularly, we've got spots to fill in the early years in silver. This goes from 1953 on. If we found anything older than that, well, that would be awesome too. So we're making great headway. And of course, if you are following along at home and you want to do quarter hunts and you want to get your hands on a Lighthouse Vista album, then use the code CRH20 at Lighthouse because you can get a 20% off your order. And so you can follow along. They are a sponsor of the channel and they're great friends. So... What you'll want to do is get one of these if you can. But let's dig in here and see what we can find. Roll number one, first commemorative of Vancouver 2010. This commemorative is from, I think, 2007 or 2008. If I flip it over, yeah, 2007 in advance of the Olympics. I can usually find these in much better condition. So I'm not going to hold on to this one. This one's also got a little bit of the ring of death from a coin rolling a wrapping machine. Lots of shine, great fields, but we can usually find these pretty pristine. So we're just going to leave that one be for now. Now here's a pretty nice looking one from 2013. This one here showing the uh, humpback whale and beluga whales. And this one's in pretty nice condition. Got a little bit of circulation wear, but not much. We'll hold on to this one. This would be a good one in someone's collection for sure. Still in that same role, our first U.S. quarter. It's an older one. It's a 1967, not silver, of course. We need it from 64 and earlier. So it's not going to be worth anything more than face value. U.S. dollars, though, I guess that's about 1.37 times what a Canadian quarter is worth. But I always pull these aside because they are worth a bit more, and I can trade them with a friend who will trade me U.S. for silver. So that's always a good trade. Roll number two, and this is what I'm looking for when I find Olympic commemoratives. This one here is pretty much uncirculated. It's got no circulation wear, no real scratches. These were really often pulled out of circulation when they came out, but I guess they're being put back in now, and sometimes I find them really, really nice like this one. Same role, here's another commemorative. This one here, I can tell you right now, is going to be a 2017, and it is featuring the Stanley Cup. This is a cool one. It's a bit of it circulated, but that's a really fun coin if you're like me, someone who grew up with hockey. That's an awesome one. And just towards the back there, there's our second U.S. And you always want to check for these more modern ones if they have that W West Point mint mark. This one's out of Philadelphia. We'll flip it over. And it's the Arches, Utah, 2014. Very cool. Roll number three. And here's another pretty nice looking commemorative. This is from 2006. Bravery. It says that in English and in French. If I flip it over. We'll see the queen, very light circulation where a little bit of gunk. It's not a keeper, not a bad looking coin. The uh, reverse particularly is nice. And then right behind that, there's a 2009 commemorative. This is another Olympic commemorative. This one is Cindy Clausen commemorating, commemorating her success in the 2006 Olympics. This one also comes in a colorized version we'd want to find that has that whole maple leaf in the background, all in red. That's a cool one if you can find it. Roll number four, we haven't found any colorized coins just yet, but we are finding some nicer looking commemoratives. Here is one. This is a Millennium one. If I flip it over. This is 2000 Natural Legacy in pretty nice condition. I think I might hold on to this one. And just at the back of that roll, we are going to get some color in our collection here, our hunt. We got a 2006, not in great condition, and some of the color is worn off, but that is the Pink Ribbon Breast Cancer Research Commemorative from 2006. We'll set that aside, our first color for the board. Roll number five, our first provincial quarter from 1992. It is from Nova Scotia. A little further back, our second colorized one. This one is another 2006, and this is a really common one. If you're going to find color in Canada, it's probably going to be this one or the 2004 Poppy. Those are the two seemingly most plentiful that you can find easily in the greatest numbers. 
Um, but we'll look to see if we can find some other ones that might be a little scarcer. Same role, here's a 1976. It's not completely uncirculated, but this is much nicer than we would typically see. In fact, it's actually a pretty good grade. If I flip it over, you can see it does have some circulation where a little nicks and scratches, probably not a keeper, and we've got better in the album for sure. But we don't usually find 70s quarters in this nice condition. Well, I called it out just a moment before. Here is a 2004 poppy, and this just proves that these are the most common, or at least the, by coincidence, we found one next. You can see that the uh, red enamel is starting to fade with circulation. It's not as strong as it might have been, but that's a cool one. That's our third colorized coin in five rolls so far. Doing good. Speaking of doing good, there's another really nice coin commemorative from 2000. That is the Creativity. And just at the end of the roll, we've got a chance for another colorized coin. It's a 2012. So these are commemoratives from the War of 1812. And if I flip it, yep, we have got Brock, Sir Isaac Brock, 1812. We've got that red maple leaf. Very cool. Roll number seven is going to give us another really nice uh, commemorative here from the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. It's the ice hockey. Well, we're nine rolls in, roll number nine. I just put it out in my hand, and this is what we're checking when we're looking at edges. And I think we're going to have two finds, and I think one of them is going to be silver. I see a very light silvery edge there. We'll take a look at that. And then another edge, it's reeded, but it looks like it's a little thicker. So we're going to just check here. This one might be a twofer. We'll check this out first. And yeah, we got a, ourselves... Look at that, there is a two for four you right there. We've got a one peso from the Philippines from 2011. That's cool, but even cooler than that, we got silver. It's a 1967 Bobcat. This could be either 50% or 80% silver. It was a transition year and they did both that year. But we got silver in the box and it's been a while since I've gotten silver in quarters. So that's always exciting. Either way, 50 or 80%. A silver quarter in a Canadian hunt is awesome. I'm always doing an edge check when I dump a rollout into my hand like this to see the edges. We can see silver, but we can also see the American edges here, that copper edge. It looks like there's at least four in here. I can only imagine, though, that when you're an American coin roll hunter and you find a Canadian, oftentimes that rim might look a lot like it could be a silver coin. So sometimes there might be some disappointment. But when you see them all like this all the time, the silver still stands out. But we got some Americans here. Not uncommon to find a bunch like we did in this roll. Just at the end of roll number 17, we got a 1973 RCMP commemorative. And we need to check every single one of these. Even ones like this with the Ring of Death to see if it might be the rare large bust variety. This isn't it. This is the small bust variety. As the name suggests, the bust of the queen on here is smaller than on the large bust, but the things to look for is the detail in the hair. There's lots of detail in the hair above the crown. And the beads are far from the rim. On the large bust, there's not a lot of detail, and those beads are very close to the rim. If you can find that, it's going to be worth $100 at least. I've never found one. It's a harder coin to find for sure. They suggest there might only be about 10,000 of those out there. I don't know if anyone's ever confirmed that, but one to look for for sure. I just wanted to do a quick follow-up on my last quarter hunt video, which was some time ago, but one of the viewers with an eagle eye um, left a comment on the video and said, take a closer look at that Alaska quarter that you got and uh, suggested that it might have an extra claw. And I put it under the scope like I'm gonna do with you right now and brought it up on screen. And sure enough, it's one of those die varieties. We can see here there's kind of an extra metal anomaly on the die here. And it is, in fact, one of these extra claw varieties. So that was really, really cool. Fortunately, I hadn't rolled this up and gotten rid of it or set it back to the bank or anything like that. I had everything here. I was able to pull it out and look at it. And sure enough, it was. So it always pays to take a close look. Now, of course, I'm not as versed in these U.S. varieties. I'm aware of some of them. Some of them um, are more familiar to me than others. And this was one that I was probably aware of, but just didn't think to look at at the time. So thank you so much. Uh, you know who you were who uh, made the comment. I really, really appreciate that. 
I'll flip this guy up and label it be, so I don't forget why I've kept this, you know, otherwise circulated quarter. It's not in terrible shape, but it's not in great shape otherwise. Uh, anyhow, but it is a minor variety that is pretty interesting to find. So it always pays to take a close peek and be familiar. Know what you're looking for. That's always a really helpful thing because if you don't know what to look for, you're never going to find it. Well, let's get back to the hunt. Roll number 19, there is a beauty. It is the 2015 non-color poppy. This is one you want to find in color. It's one of the most striking coins with the big poppy petals all in red. And there is another striking Olympic commemorative. This is the snowboarding from 2008 in advance of the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. Roll 20 is going to give us a really nice provincial. This one here is from Prince Edward Island, and that's just a beautiful coin. Roll 24, I've got an interesting looking edge just right at the end. It's pretty worn, um, and the coloring is a bit off, but it's not really giving me any sort of dead giveaway. Usually this is just a dirty coin. So very interesting. Okay, so it's Queen Elizabeth II. You can see that, but there's very little detail on this here. Um, and if it is silver, it's going to be a 65 and later. And oh my, we can barely see anything on here. We'll give it the... It kind of does have an interesting sound about it, but we're going to have to try to scope it and see if we can identify this coin. I don't know. I am not getting a date off of this, so I'm going to have to, I think, weigh it on the scale and see. It sounds a bit different. Um, let's see. So I'm thinking it's not silver. Here's our silver coin. Let's try that again. And here's the one we just found. It's a very different sound. But we'll weigh it up and we'll see. All right, here's the scale. A silver coin is going to weigh 5.83 grams, give or take. It's 5.77. That's our silver. This one here, if it's not silver, it's going to be like 5.0 something. And yeah, it is not silver. Just had an odd coloring and we can't make out what it is, but it is not silver. Roll 26 and I almost missed this 2004. I just kind of tossed it aside. When I'm hunting coins, I'm doing it pretty quickly. And this is a really nice one. This obverse looks very much the same as the regular one. So you got to be careful if you find the modern portrait of the queen with the P composition mark on it, which means multiply, play, multiply plated steel. You need to be sure it's not a 2004 before you toss it aside. And this one's a really nice one. Good color. Nice fields. Nice. Roll number 28, this is going to be our 12th U.S. quarter of the hunt. It's got a Philadelphia mint mark on it, and this one is going to be a Pennsylvania state quarter from 1999. Just a bit behind that U.S. quarter, we're going to get a really nice Alberta commemorative from 2005. I don't often find them in beautiful shape like this one. This one is a keeper. Roll 29, more color, and it is Isaac Brock once again. We're into roll number 31. We're going to get a little splash of color here. This is our 11th color of the box. This is the 2011 Peregrine Falcon. Roll 32, the very distant cousin of the Peregrine Falcon is the Wood Bison. Roll 34 has a dandy. This is one I haven't seen in a while. This is the 2017 Hope for a Green Future color version. And that is a really cool one. Roll 38, we're going to have a really nice looking provincial here. Again, 1992. This one is from Alberta. And then I saw one at the back that looked pretty suspicious, but I think it's just an oddly discolored coin. And it's just so hard to see, but I think that looks like 1988 so it's not silver but just very discolored very weird roll 42 and another war of 1812 color commemorative this time it's laura secord roll 43 and there's a pretty nice looking 1970s quarter in pretty nice condition it's circulated of course but much nicer than we typically see well, number 46, we've got our fifth pink ribbon from 2006. This one a little worn in the center. Roll 50, no silver by the edge. Can we eke out another interesting find? 
We'll find out in a second. So we're a few coins into that last roll. We got a 1968, and this, of course, is a transition year. So we didn't see it by the edge, but 68s can either be 50% silver or nickel. If it's nickel, it's going to be magnetic. So, and it is, but it's always worth checking because you can't always tell just by the coloring. So that's 50 rolls hunted. We've finished that box and we got some good stuff. We got 15 US and in the foreign pile, we also got this 2011 one peso from the Philippines, which is always really cool to get a foreign coin in your coin roll hunts. We ended the hunt with 15 colorized quarters. That's not bad. It's not as high as I'd like to get and probably a bit below the average. We ended up getting four of the 2004 poppies. We got five of the 2006 pink ribbon. We got two of the um, 2011. We got the peregrine falcon and we got the wood bison. We got a few of the colorized War of 1812 two Brock and a Laura Secord and one of the 2017 Hope for a Green Future. We got a bunch of other commemoratives here. We'll check against the album. It's going to be tough because we got some really good stuff in there. We did get a couple of uh, nice provincials and some of these millenniums that 2000 is gorgeous, but I think most of these are looking pretty good, but we'll check. Some from 2005 or 2006 and some of the Olympic ones as well and some of the more recent ones. The find of the hunt, of course, was getting silver. It's not gonna be an addition, I don't think, to the album. We've already got this in there. It's a 1967, pretty circulated, but that is silver in the hunt. So I'm gonna grab our album and I'll do a quick check and see if we get any upgrades. So I scoured the album and it turns out we did have an upgrade, not an addition, but we did upgrade that 2005 from Alberta. It was a beauty, just slightly better than the one that was in there, but enough for me to want to swap it out. So we've improved the album even this far into it. I think we're probably about 25 quarter hunts in. I'm not exactly sure. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And of course, you know, we got silver and you can't be mad at that. Silver is pretty awesome to find in a coin roll hunt, whether you're north of the border or south of the border. It's not an average ordinary thing. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun along the way. I always do. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. The sponsors of today's video are Lighthouse Canada and the Charlton Press. Lighthouse Canada is the leading supplier of high quality numismatic supplies in Canada and the Charlton Press is the leading publisher of coin and paper money catalogs and price guides for Canadian collectors. Go check out their online stores today and use the exclusive discount code CRH20 for 20% off all your purchases.